Welcome to Chugging Along with me, Tim. And me, Sam. So yes, thank you very much for your comments in our last video about us being offered cash for our narrowboat. And we do very much appreciate receiving valuations in the comments, <laughs> but we currently have no plans to sell. We also want to say a massive thank you to all you lovely subscribers as we recently hit 9,000 subs. And don't forget, we did say that when we reach 10,000 subs, we will be releasing yeah. that footage of me falling into the canal. But we maybe might not get there and who knows, maybe that footage will never ever leave the vault. That's true, that's true. And we might not even be on 9,000 now because our subscribers can also go down. But if you do want to see Sam fall in, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> if you are new here, we are doing a big summer trip between Thiel and Clangochlan. And this week's video, we are going to be going between Hockley Heath and Dickens Heath on the Stratford Canal in the Midlands. So we're over halfway there now. And uh, yeah, in this video, we're also going to discuss how we work cruising together as a team is there something we could change do we find it difficult you'll want to stick around till the end of this video as we show you the modern canal village that was first inhabited in 1998 and we go to Birmingham so let's get started with today's cruise we set off and it started pleasantly We did say that last week we had no more locks until Birmingham, but that was wishful thinking. We still actually had a few more to do, but we did actually enjoy these bubble bath style single locks in the Stratford, and it wasn't busy at all when we were on it either, so no queuing. this canal side house that has a matching narrowboat, the perfect use of a canal side garden. We passed the cricket club at Lapworth where we saw the game of cricket the evening before. Now it was time for us to do this hydraulic hand cranked lift bridge. And if you haven't noticed, we have a fairly rigid set routine when we cruise. It's that I do the steering and Sam does the locks and bridges. But sometimes we both get the inkling to swap. Right, yeah, I've just realised that, uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't get back over there to go and uh, cruise the boat through. And Sam says she don't want to... Uh, she doesn't want to chug through so I'll have to close it back down again then Sam will do it and we'll go and do it again. This is where communication comes into it. So if Tim and I had discussed before that he actually wanted to go and do the lift bridge then I could have mentally prepared myself to actually 
steer Mariel through the narrow gap. That being said, I actually haven't had a chance to steer Mariel through any narrow gaps yet, so maybe I wasn't feeling that confident on that day. Things always seem to go a little bit wrong when we slip out of our routine. All right, so then Sam, to turn this into a sort of YouTube relationship therapy session, uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, do you, do you think it would be better if we fully learn each other's cruising tasks and we did everything equally like that? Do you think we would have more fun like that and everything would be better or? I can see two answers to this one. On the one hand, um, I could say no, because especially on such a long trip as this is, us knowing what we're doing and focusing on one thing helps keep us very efficient. Mm. Um, I can work the locks as quickly as I can and Tim can focus on steering. On the other hand, yes, because if we have a better idea of what the other person is doing, then it just means that we can actually help each other out a bit more. So I see, yeah, you haven't cracked emotionally there, which means that <laughs> I think you're fine <laughs> with doing what you're doing and we're probably not going to change it. I think it works well. We have our own worlds and it sort of works well. <laughs> I think if you want to get to a destination the most efficiently mm. or the most efficient way then it makes more sense we both do what we're best at. This is a small boatyard called Swallow Cruisers. You can see here people getting work done to their boats and we actually haven't seen Mariel out of the water yet and I think we're weirdly excited to see that. But then thinking about it, usually when you have your boat out of the water that means you're spending a lot of money so maybe we shouldn't be too excited to see it. Look at this special central steering zone on this narrow boat. You've got a little separate guest room at the back there that could be the world's smallest Airbnb. Would you spend a night in there? Comment below. It was then time to moor up for the night and we realised we hadn't actually made much progress at all. The closest shots to us were still Hockley Heath, but it did officially mean that our boat was in the county of the West Midlands, the home of Birmingham and Wolverhampton. We got some chips from the chip shop for tea, and also Tim wants to try this Wolverhampton pork crunch. We'd never seen it before. Tim, what did you think of them? Yeah, I thought they were a culinary delight, if not a bit strange, yeah. Very salty, weren't they? They were very salty. The next morning was beautifully sunny as we set off. The next lift ridge was close by, and this time we didn't have the kerfuffle as we stuck to our rolls, for better or worse.
This beautiful boat was for sale, but this was filmed a few months ago, so it almost definitely has a new owner by now. Look at this, using a dinghy as a cratch cover roof. It's an absolutely fantastic idea. Surely this idea could take off with boat builders. We absolutely love it. We then heard the mighty horn of a really nice Diddy narrowboat. This sign brought back the craziest form of deja vu for me. I remembered seeing this sign for a bakery when I did a narrowboat holiday in 2002 with my family and I'm pretty sure we stopped here to get some baked goods back then. This was the route we did, it was going into Birmingham and Stratford and there was a bit of a ring involved and it was one of my favourite family holidays as a child. I like this little gothic purple narrowboat. It didn't look very scary on a sunny morning, but it definitely looked easy to fall off the back of and onto the propeller of terror. Today's drink was a Monster Energy Mango, which is lovely on a summer's day. It has 32 milligrams of caffeine per 100 milliliters, and it definitely keeps our minds sharper than sherry does. We really didn't see too many moving boats. It was always nice seeing someone else enjoying the canal. Hello. Hi. Then, out of nowhere, we got to our destination. The modern canal village of Dickens Heath. Look at these beautiful flats and houses. We moored up in this peaceful spot and we walked over the bridge, through the alleyway and into the village. It's all under 25 years old but was built to resemble a more traditional way of living. We really liked it. They also have a railway station within walking distance called Whitlock's End and we treated ourselves to a day trip in Birmingham.
but we can't show you too much of the Peaky Blinder city because that is next week's video where we take our narrow boat into the city centre and also do a narrow boat versus train race as we try and get revenge on my brother who beat us when we were on the River Thames earlier on in the year. So yeah, very exciting special episode of Chugging Along which we look forward to sharing with you. <laughs> So, Tim, it's now time for those all-important cruising statistics. Yes, you're right, of course, yes. So, uh, over the two days, we did six miles and four locks, and that was all in five hours, thus making our average speed 1.2 miles an hour. It has been quite slow on the Stratford Canal, and we think that might be to do with the shallow waters. It was yeah, quite it shallow, shallow at the time, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, mm. that now brings our trip average to 1.6 three miles an hour if you're not aware we are trying to get to Klangochen on a 1.5 we will see and <laughs> now that means we've done 157 out of 269 miles so thank you very much guys for watching this video all the way to the end and as always no matter what you do in life you've got to remember to keep chugging, chugging.